Eventually, chordates transitioned from water to land. The inset for each organism shows adaptations that show the transition of lobe fins to, to limbs. Working from left to right, we start with, well, we're going to name the, gene, the genus of each of these groups of animals. Starting with Eusthenopteron. Eusthenopteron was an early bony fish that used its muscular front fins for steering more than for swimming. Pandorichthys was a fish with sturdier, more mobile, and proportionately larger front fins than earlier fishes had. Tiktaalik, which we've read about, was not quite a fish and not quite a tetrapod. It had stout, stubby front fins with flexible wrists that likely enabled it to prop itself up on land, but it had no digits, no fingers and toes. It had gills and lungs. Acanthostega had digits on its front feet, but spent most of its time in the water. Though it had gills, it may have used its limbs to prop itself out of oxygen-poor water so it could breathe air with its lungs. Ichthyostega had sturdy hind feet with several digits, but it probably used them more often to paddle through the water than to walk on land. It may have moved like a seal on land. Proterogyrinus was a true tetrapod and agile both in water and on land much as today's alligators are. How is the body shape of Tiktaalik different from that of most tetrapods today? If you look at it, it appears to be much more streamlined, more adapted to the water. How are the limb bones of Protero Proterogyrinus different from those of Ichthyostega? Notice that the digits are longer and more finger-like. The word amphibian means double life because most amphibians live in water as larvae, but on land as adults. Most amphibians also require water for reproduction, breathe with lungs as adults, have moist skin with mucus glands, and lack scales and claws. Here we see the major adaptations seen in amphibians, and here we see some other characteristics. The general story of amphibian evolution has been known for years. Several fossils indicate that various lines of lobe-finned fishes sequentially evolved sturdier and sturdier appendages which resembled the limbs of tetrapods. But in recent years, a series of spectacular transitional fossils have been discovered that document in detail the transformation from lobe fins to limbs. The 375 million year old Tiktaalik fossil was discovered in Canada in 2004. It is considered a transitional fossil because it shows features of both tetrapods and the fish from which they evolved. Fins with wrist bones, gills, and lungs. Tiktaalik could swim and breathe underwater like a fish or crawl and breathe out of water like a tetrapod. So its discoverers called it a fishapod. Life on land requires more than legs on which to crawl. Early amphibians also evolved ways to breathe air and protect themselves from drying out. These adaptations to terrestrial ecosystems fueled another adaptive radiation. Amphibians became the dominant vertebrates of the warm, swampy Carboniferous period, about 359 to 300 million years ago. But this success didn't last. Climate changes caused many low, swampy habitats, habitats to disappear. Most amphibian groups became extinct by the end of the Permian period, about 250 million years ago. Only three orders of amphibians survive today, frogs and toads, salamanders, and sacilians. Reptiles evolved from ancient amphibians that continued to evolve the adaptations to drier conditions. 
reptiles have dry, scaly skin, well-developed lungs, strong limbs, and shelled eggs that do not develop in water. Living reptiles are represented by four groups, lizards and snakes, crocodilians, turtles and tortoises, and the tuatara. These are the major adaptive characteristics seen in reptiles. These adaptations allowed members of this group, of these groups, to survive and, can, and reproduce in drier conditions than amphibians can. The first known reptile fossil dates back to the Carboniferous period, 350 million years ago. As the Carboniferous ended and the Permian period began, Earth's climate became cooler and less humid. Many lakes and swamps dried up. The first great adaptive radiation of reptiles began as these animals evolved adaptations in response to environmental change to drier conditions. By the end of the Permian, about 250 million years ago, many diverse reptiles roamed Earth.